Welcome friends, Alex here. Thank you for joining me again. And today we're gonna to talk about my proven fast track to financial freedom. Now, before we start, uh, we have to understand what ROI means. Okay, so we're gonna do a very simple conversation, very simple example of what ROI is so that you understand, the, it gives you a context of overall the rest of uh, the conversations that we're gonna have. Now, there are three important steps that I use in my life and that I have implemented in my journey to financial freedom. And without further ado, let's get started. Now, ROI, what is ROI? ROI is the acronym for return on investment. And it's a very simple calculation of your profits divided by the investment or the amount of money that you've put down for the investment. Okay, that's, that's the math for it. Um, and I'll do an example real quick. And so we'll pull up my handy dandy whiteboard. And here we go. If you buy something for $100 and you sold it for $120 one year later, all right? And I use one year for a specific reason. When we divide that, so your ROI is your profit divided by your investment, your profit is Profit is $20 divided by your investment, which is $100. That gives you 0.2. Now we wanna find out this in percentages. So oftentimes you'll find, you'll see people multiply this by 100% to give you a percentage. That is 20% ROI. And the reason why I use one year, because any investor, what we do is we analyze, we annualize all of our returns. Okay, so this is a great, it's a, it's a decent investment. It's 20% ROI for the year. All right, um, now let's get to the simple three steps, okay, that I promised. Let me just clear this out first. All right. Um, and so before we get started, the first step is we must know where we are, okay? And I'm gonna introduce the theory, the, the, the theory of how to really accelerate your financial freedom. And we'll look at some popular places where people invest their money and what is the average ROI for these things. And I'll use hypothetical examples, so try and apply it in your situation. Okay, so, um, Let's look at the ROI of some of the places that people will invest. Uh, we have, oh, what happened here? Whoa, all right. So we have 401, uh, we have stocks, stocks. Let me just uh, fix this stand real quick. But my hand doesn't always get in the way. We have stocks that gives us about 8% ROI. And then we have 401ks and IRAs. All right, those somewhere around 7% ROI. And then what else do we have? We have people put their money in CDs or certificate of deposits. Those give you about 2%. 2% ROI. And then what else do we have? We have savings. People put money in savings. Uh, I believe it's probably somewhere around, let's just say, let's just give it some, the benefit of the doubt. All right, 1%. So savings, 1%. We're not even gonna look at your checkings account because you know that's not even a percent. So this is basically the most popular places that you hear people invest their money. Oh, the, the reason why the channel is created. So 
real estate. All right, and I'm just gonna put this because I put it at the top because I believe it's the most powerful vehicle and I don't do anything that is less than 20%. So let's go with 20% ROI. Excuse me for my handwriting. I'm not very good at writing on the, the whiteboard, yeah, on the, on the, on the iPad. Um, now, the goal for us, okay, is to move our lowest, this is the first concept and theory that you must understand that we always want to move our lowest yielding investment and we want to move it into our highest. All right, so you want to go from, let me erase this real quick. Erase. So what you want to do, the way to financial freedom is going from your lowest yielding to your highest yielding. So we want to go from here to here. Or we want to allocate our money. Um, let's, let's use an example. Let's say we have, let's just say we have $50,000 in each of these. Okay, so $50,000. Oh, there's also something else that I forgot. People have their money in their homes. So equity. Home. What is that money doing? That money is actually giving us 0% ROI. Now, you may be asking, oh, what about appreciation? My house is worth so much more. Well, the money that's sitting in there is technically not making you any extra, more, any more money because it doesn't have to sit in there for your property to grow. So that's why we say it's 0% ROI. Okay? Now, in this channel, it's, we're about upstreaming our life. Okay, and what that means is how do we become free of debt, free of worries, free of all the financial burdens, so that we could live the life that we all dreamed of. Okay, we can live, we can travel, we can be the boss of our own time, spend more time with our family. We work because we want to work, not because we have to work. All right, that's, that's really the idea of this channel is how do we upstream our life? And I will continue weekly to give us tips, uh, to give you viewers tips and advice of how we're going to do that. Um, so uh, the second step, all right, now that we understand this, the first theory, right, is to move our lower ROIs to our higher ROIs. The second step is what most people have, most people know me for is real estate investing. So I'm going to talk about real estate right here. Okay, I'm going to talk about this 20% ROI and how we calculate that in real estate. So let's go to the next page. All right, so a house. If you bought a house, right, if you bought a house for, let's say $200,000, 200K, the value is 200K, and then you sold it uh, a year later for 300,000, uh, and let's say you paid this whole, uh, the 200k completely with cash. So you actually had to invest 200k to make the profit of 100k. Okay, stay with me here. So your ROI is your profit divided by your initial investment. Okay, there are the cost of your investment that is 100,000 divided by 200k. You get 0.5. Wow. That is an ugly five. Let's erase that. Whoa. That is 0.5 multiplied by 100. And the simple math you understand here is that you made 50% on your investment. Okay? Now, what is amazing about real estate is that you don't need to put 200,000 down. So what would it look like if I put 20% down? All right, your typical investment properties need 20% down. So now you have, let's do the math over again. 20% of, uh, of 200K is 40,000. So your profit is 100,000. And 
your investment was 40,000. Okay, so because remember, it takes 20% of 200K as a down payment, all right, um, to purchase this property or to control it. That gives us two, right? What is it? 2.5 times 100%. So now this property, you return 250% on your money. So this is the beauty of real estate and I'm gonna continue talking about it in a second. So this is a very simple, hy hypothetical, very easy to understand uh, scenario. Now, what happens to, how else do you get paid in real estate? Because um, this is just about appreciation. I bought it for one price and then I sold it for another. Let's move on in real estate. And I know the second step, I'm gonna take a lot of time because I just love it. All right. Um, what about the principal pay down? Somebody is paying the mortgage every month, All right? So let's say in that year, uh, the mortgage that's being paid down is also part of the money that you make, right? Because when you sell the house, you get that as well. So the way we really calculate ROI on um, in real estate is we have to calculate the cash on cash, cash on cash return. This is how much money you're making per month on this property. So let's say you purchased a property for, um, or, or your rental income is $1,000 a month after all the expenses. So that's called your net operating income, NOI. All right, so your cash on cash. Uh, and then there's the principal pay down. And then there's also the appreciation of the property. And I'm gonna show you guys how to get all of these. Oh, and we're not even gonna talk about taxes. I mean, this is a whole different conversation, but if you made $50,000 in your rental property versus making $50,000 working as an accountant, how, who do you think keeps more of that money, right? This is why real estate is just so powerful and I'm such an advocate for it. Okay, so, um, you have to calculate all that. And I'm not going to do the math for this whole thing right now, but sometimes people are like, oh, well, how do I calculate, pre uh, calculate appreciation? Well, appreciation, let's just take the national average appreciation and we'll even lowball that number. So we'll say it's 3% per year. Okay, that means if you bought a property for a hundred, if the house is worth $100,000 this year, that means this is year one, first year, I mean, it's your second year, it's gonna be worth 103,000. Now, uh, the third, okay, the third step, after understanding all of this, I won't even clear it. Let's just go on to the next page. Uh, the third step is understanding the compound effects of it. How does compound effect work? Uh, Einstein says that compound interest or compound effect is the most powerful force that we know, okay? Which means over a short period of time, uh, over a long period of time, little things turn into something really big. And that applies for our habits and uh, applies in our finances, it applies everywhere in our life. Um, if you're, you know, you may not see the effects of maybe not drinking a soda today, taking out that 100, uh, 150 calories, you know, maybe you don't see the effects of that, but compound it over time, over 30 years, 100, and if you did it every day, 105, 150 calories times 365 over 30 years, you would probably be in pretty good shape. And if you, and the, the opposite works too. If you uh, drank an extra soda every day, 150 calories times 365 days over 30 years, you're probably wondering why you have such a big gut. Okay, so that's how compounding works, and it works in finances too. And I'm going to show you that as a difference, and it's huge. It's so big. So let's go back to the first page actually for a minute. Um, now, it's very, very easy to find real estate that gives you an overall 20% ROI. All right, and many, many of my deals are way, way over that. I have properties doing 80% 
ROI. I personally have properties doing infinite. And if you want to know how I do infinite returns, we'll have another video for that. But in real estate, it's just the most powerful place, not only to store your money and to keep your money, transferring of wealth, but it's also just the most powerful uh, vehicle to create financial freedom for yourself. All right. So let's just, for example, let's take CDs because I'm not going to, I'm not really going to talk about savings because, you know, I, I don't, if you have an emergency fund, I don't want to really tap into that, but let's say you have $50,000. Okay. Sitting in your CD. And if you were to move it to real estate, well, why do I put 50%? Let me erase this and correct it. Excuse me, guys. 50K. If you were to move it from a 2% ROI generating investment, and, and before we move on, 2% is a joke because it doesn't even keep up with inflation. That means every year you're actually losing money. So I don't know what kind of investment that is. But let's say you move it from your CD to a 20% ROI real estate. That gives you 18 percent difference okay 20 minus 2 18 percent difference in roi what does that look like in 30 years so check this out let's go to our handy dandy compounding calculator and we have to make it straight because it won't go horizontal so 30 years let's see what the difference of that the difference in interest rate, so interest rate, this is the ROI, your return on investment, is 18%, right? And our initial contribution was 50,000. We're not even gonna add no monthly addition. This is compounded annually, all right? You see at the bottom, it says your end capital is $7,168,000, 531. That is the difference Okay, if you just left $50,000 sitting in your CD versus having a sit in a real estate property that's generating 20% ROI a year, the difference in 30 years is $7 million. Now we're only talking about $50,000 over the course of your life. That's not a lot of money. Okay, so if you're continuously doing this, consistently putting money in a higher generating generating ROI, can you see the difference of when you were retired? So let's not even go with 30 years. Let's let's look at 20 years. Say I want to retire retire in 20 years. Okay. One million three hundred sixty-nine thousand dollars. So in that 10 year, I mean if you if you want to take your money out if you want to retire earlier, that's what it looks like with that fifty thousand dollars. All right. So um a just a simple note from me all right so first of all those are the three steps that you got three theories and three steps that you got to understand is the first one is we have to let me go back to this the first one is understanding where you are where do you have your investments and it's about moving from a lower yielding investment to a higher yielding investment the second step is put it into your highest uh, returning investment. Understand it, learn it, uh, and it's not a risk. It's actually a risk when you don't do that. All right, it's a risk if you just leave it in your CD. Don't be the person that's like, oh man, it's too hard for me to understand. No, it's not that hard to, to understand at all. Okay, it's a huge, huge risk. It's not a risk to try and learn it and go after it and do it. All right, even if you fail a couple times, you know what? You're still going to retire wealthy. All right, if you just get it right one or two times. Okay, and once you get it right one or two times, it's more likely that you're going to continue to do it right. So don't be afraid. Get rid of those limiting beliefs. Get rid of all those thoughts that you can't do it. Um, because putting your money in a CD or something that's low returning, it's just, it's, it's, it's so silly. And it's, uh, it's the riskiest thing you can do. Okay, even if you left it in the stock market, okay, if, if you were just like, no, I don't want to do anything with it, what does that look like? 8%, let's go back to the compounding calculator. I'm generating 
8% per year over the term over the period of 30 years. All right, my initial contribution being $50,000, I don't put any more money in any month. All right, I'm going to retire with $503,000. Uh when I pull my money out, they're going to tax me and I really can't really live on that at all, you know? So, single digit ROIs move them. Move them to double and triple digit ROIs. All right. Final note from me, it's not a guaranteed journey. I mean, it's not a, it's not guaranteed just because you've watched this video, but if you don't apply it, if you don't integrate the things, if you don't apply the things that you learn here and take some sort of committed action moving forward, nothing's really going to happen. All right. One of the best sayings by Tony Robbins and is that all the knowledge in the world plus $5 gets you a Starbucks coffee. All right. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's how much knowledge is worth when you don't apply it. Okay, so since you've watched this video to this point, I know that you are serious. Um, and if you don't know where to start, I'll tell you where to start. Start by subscribing, hitting the subscribe button, the notification button. Every time that I make a new video, it's going to come up for you. And comment your question below. I will make an effort to respond to every single one of them. And uh, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.